This is Top Gamer 007 here, and I am sorry that I didn't upload for six days. A lot of important things were going around me, so because I missed almost a week of news, I'm going to be talking about newer, more relevant news, and I'm going to try something a little different with the VG Bulletin, and I would love your guys' feedback in the comment section below, and it's kind of similar to what I did with the last Bulletin, but... Well, enough with my rambling. Link to all news articles and timestamp is gonna be in the description below. And don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And let's get started! Let's talk about Sonic Mania, the game that Sonic 4 should have been. It finally got an update on the Nintendo Switch. This update fixes the home button, delay, and various other bugs on the Nintendo Switch from this tweet from Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter. And I could confirm that from myself that the delay to click to the click the home button is minimized. That's all for Sonic Mania news. But that's not all for Sonic news. I can give you today on the Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel a new gameplay for Sonic Forces show off a new classic level called the Casino Forest. And many people on the internet noticed that there's no enemies in this level. And I believe it's because of maybe have something to do with the story. So some people are saying that it might not be the final bill. And that's the reason why enemies not populated in the level. But I don't believe so. But it could be say a cut to the end of the stage that doesn't feature enemies. Anyway, what do I know anyway? If you are still interested in ukulele on the Nintendo Switch, I am. I didn't buy the game on any other platform because I heard that it's coming on the Nintendo Switch and it will be released with all the patches and improvements with the Nintendo Switch version. And I said, this might be the definitive version. You can play with you anywhere you want, on the toilet, anywhere you want, outside, and play ukulele, right? So that's why I thought the Nintendo Switch version would be the best for me. Playtonic Games have a quote explaining why they can't give a release window for this game for the Nintendo Switch. I could tell you the full quote, but I am really good at summarizing, right? And if you want the full quote, it's obviously going to be in the description below in the Nintendo Everything link in the description, of course, saying that they want to Saying that they're waiting on a new update for Unity called Unity Update 5.6 to fix the problems they encounter before they submit the game and lock in Ukulele's release time. Let's talk about three games on the Nintendo Switch about graphics. Yeah, Nintendo fans love graphics. But let's start with Nintendo fan favorite, one of the most anticipated game of 2017. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, Super Mario Odyssey. Digital Foundry said that the game is running at 900p, 60fps. Also, after the direct, I did make a video saying that Mario Odyssey did increase to 900p, and they know at E3 today they did say that they targeting at 60fps at all times. So I predict 900p, 60fps, and Digital Foundry confirmed that. You basically look at it and you can tell it's a resolution jump. It's obviously not going to be 720p. It, we never heard of 800p on no game, so we're going to say 900p. And I don't believe Nintendo could push it to 1080p 60fps, because they couldn't even do that for Breath of the Wild. And Mario Odyssey is shaping up to be a big game. So, I knew we are going to be around the 900p mark for, for this game. And we should know this from now that Nintendo like polishing their games at the last minute just before the game get gold and I most likely I believe that Super Mario Odyssey is already gone gold and any other thing that that come to Super Mario Odyssey is gonna be in day one patches or patches after if they want to polish anymore in my opinion because it's only been it's gonna be a month they have to print out the cartridges I think two weeks before you had to go to GameStop major retailers to start distributing to different places so I believe, yeah, it's not going to be related, but I believe Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will also do this, and it's going to be this last minute polish to 900p, 30 frames per second, because why not? Xenoblade Chronicles is a big game like Zelda, and deserve that resolution. So let's shoot through to the next topic of graphics. That's going to be L.A. Noir. 
everyone's favorite detective game for the Nintendo Switch. You graphic savvy people out there, LA Noir is going to be 1080p in dock and 720p in portable mode on the Nintendo Switch. And this might be a really quality port. But did I forget about frame rate? No, I did not. Rockstar still didn't confirm the game frame rate. If I'm going to guess, this game going to be at 30 FPS because Rockstar is not talking about frame rate. So, and I almost forgot um, that Rockstar also confirmed that the original game DLC is going to be included in the Nintendo Switch version and most likely probably the front of other remasters for other platforms as well. It's not only Nintendo Switch and it's going to have every Nintendo Switch feature except that IR camera thingy on the Switch Joy-Cons, the Joy-Con right controller. Let's move on to Doom Switch news and graphics about Doom and frame rate, right? It's going to be 720p in dock and portable mode. And the worst thing of all, this is my opinion, the worst thing of all is that it's going to be 30 FPS in dock uh, and portable mode, I believe. I think they only confirm portable mode, but I'm not sure. But Bethesda, what is this? Like, what is this? How can you play Doom in anything but 60 FPS? Like, I never seen anyone. Like, I see people with the crappiest computer doing 720p, 60 FPS, and they can run it with, with Vulcan. I, I don't understand. Maybe I'm not understanding it well. Maybe the Switch, maybe those computers are a little bit stronger. It's most likely it's a little bit stronger because you can play other games and the Switch can. A little bit stronger. I, I, I should say, it even have a... I think R, R7-260X can run it at 60 frames per second, even 720p with Vulcan. So I still don't understand. And I don't care if it might be portable. A lot of fans are talking about portable and that's why it doesn't matter. 30 FPS is okay with portable gaming, blah, blah, blah. But come on, it's Doom, 30 FPS Doom, like, come on, I, I, I think in my opinion, I am going to stick with the PC version. I was actually it's, uh, really excited to play this portable Lee, but I don't really use the portable function as much, really. Like, I understand, like, I use it, I don't leave my house with my Switch, I have it like in my bed playing or something like that. Or maybe I go to the bathroom. Maybe once in a while I go on a road trip with my family or anything like that. So I have the Switch with me. So I don't think Doom is the right market for me. But come on. Please. At least, Professor. At least 40 FPS. Professor. At least try. 40 FPS is better than nothing. And PC gamers say, let's get that 40 F 45 FPS or something like that. Come on. At least 45 frames. Anything but 30 frames per second. Come on, let's try it. Do an unlock frame rate, please. Like, something. This is my opinion. It's okay to disagree with me in the comment section below. So, let's slash, survive, whatever you want to say, on Attack on Titans 2 video game news. And it will be coming on to the Nintendo Switch to the West. It was confirmed to come to the West. Gummy Tecmo looks like they're really supporting the Nintendo Switch. Anyway, I am definitely going to get this one on Nintendo Switch. I am a huge anime fan. I love anime games or anything in the anime art style. I love more anime games to come to the Nintendo Switch in the future. That's why I would love to support them in general to come to the Nintendo Switch. I don't care if it's Komi Tempo or Bandai Namco. They need, Bandai Namco really needs their games on there. But if, if this game is as good, Attack on Titans 2 is as good as the original one that should be expected this is going to be an excellent addition to to the switch third party library let's move on to like a small insert in my vg bulletin stardew valley is a proof of the nintendo switch and as i speak today right now release date is being finalized the tweet that gives us this information is on screen right now Let's teleport on to Final Fantasy XV news. Square Enix is considering on additional season pass for Final Fantasy XV. Director Hajima Tabata said the team wants to create more stories that fill in what fans feel is missing from the main game. I would definitely support this if this was a reality. It would have been cool for 
story DLC about Arden or Luna. Arden backstory would have been more interesting to me because he's Arden, of course. I would love the backstory. I would love his story until he meets Noctis. Like, make a whole story, a backstory of why he hate the 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 chosen king, and and then lead up his story to how he met Noctis at the beginning of the game at the is it the docks? I think it's the docks. So it would have been an amazing story to include his perspective on things. Also, we might have. In Arden's backstory, we might have be able to be in the action when Kingsglaive happened and his signing ceremony of the peace treaty would have been amazing to see that in actual gameplay, not as a movie. And why he wants to be the chosen king and destroy the, the, the king's blood and it would have been amazing. But anyway, that would be a huge dream. I would support that all the way. But I know a lot of people don't want to pay for another season pass this has been a huge topic with different games having two season passes and they dislike this but be real for for Square Enix they're gonna give you a huge for 30 or 25 dollars you're gonna be getting a good game and not good game more additional content you rather pay $60 so you well unknown Square Enix could be making a Final Fantasy 15-2 and you guys have to pay $60 to get the full story. In my opinion, $25 to $30 for an additional season pass is better than buying a completely new game. Let's move on to the last news of today. Nintendo confirms Fire Emblem Warrior DLC for the West and Game Amiibo support is detailed. I am going to read the Nintendo press release from Nintendo Everything. And if you want to, if you want the source I got it, it's going to be in the description below like always. Season Pass, October 20th. You'll be available October 20th. It's going to be $19.99 in the United States or $17.99 Euros. The Fire Emblem Warrior Season Pass includes all three DLC packs which become available as they release. Each DLC pack is filled with new characters and weapons. By purchasing the Season Pass for either Nintendo Switch or new 3DS, the new 3DS versions, Players will receive a brittle costume for Lucina. Now I'm going to tell you the details for the DLC packs. DLC pack number one is going to release in December 2017. It's going to be $8.99 in the United States or 8.09 euros. Obviously, Europe, UK, the concept in this pack is expired by Fire Emblem Fates. DLC pack number two will release around February 2018 at the same price as $8.99 or 8.09 euros. Many of the characters and items in this DLC will help from Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. And let's move on to DLC pack three. It's gonna release around March 2018, a year after the Switch release, around the exact same price of $8.99 or 8.09 euros. Fans of the Fire Emblem Awakening will love this DLC as much content is themed after the classic game. Also, Nintendo has provided some information about amiibo support in Fire Emblem Warriors. The new Chrom and Tiki figures, plus other compatible Fire Emblem amiibo figures, including Marth, Ike, Robin, and Lucina. Those are from the the Smash Bros line grants weapons or materials when tapped. Players can scan up to five different compatible amiibos per day. This DLC was such a huge surprise. It wasn't like Hyrule Warriors did this and all that DLC was so uh, there. Like, come on, like, Cory Tetmo did this with Hyrule Warriors. It was obvious that DLC was coming and more content for Fire Emblem Warriors is always good. So now we have three DLC packs slated for Holiday 2017. We got the the last part of the Zelda DLC pack. We have Mario Rabbids in the first DLC pack. And now we have Fire Emblem Warriors. Man, if you didn't put any money for your favorite Nintendo games uh, DLC packs, get ready to cough out $60. That's basically a 100% new game. Even if I'm going to, or in this case, I already did for Zelda DLC. I'm still waiting for Mario Rabbids, 
Uh, I don't care about the beginning bonuses, so I'm just gonna wait until the DLC release, then buy DLC just like I did with Zelda. And I'm gonna do the same thing with Fire Emblem Warriors when it comes out. So this is like <laughs> this is like a whole new game just for DLC for Nintendo. It's it's better than Fire Emblem Awakening when you have to. I don't think it was a season pass for Fire Emblem Awakening. You just have to buy everything separately, and I'm, I'm happy that it's a season pass for those type of stuff. So yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like videos like this one to help expand my channel and share the video to think it go inform someone else and comment below about your opinions about these articles. So this is Talk Gamer 007 and I see you in the next one. Peace.